Hello everyone, Jules ever here, and um, I want to start off first off by saying my mic quality not, might not be perfect because I'm having problems with my headset right now, so I'm currently using my built-in mic. So I have a new concept video for you guys. It's been a while, hasn't it? And um, what I'm going to show you is a little concept of what I like to call um, pathfinding. I really don't think it's considered pathfinding because it doesn't actually. Fi fi I don't. I don't. Know. I'll show you. But um, I'm gonna. Just drew a random shape in a random location, not for anything specific, and make myself a slide potion. And I start on the first block, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna track essentially the ending block of this little puzzle here, and then give it a second or two, and a gold block will appear on top of it, showing that this is the end of the system. And I'm just gonna break that and cover back up, and just to show you that this works anywhere in the world. I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to draw a completely different shape. Let's draw a circle. Sounds fun, right? Oh, can't do a circle. I am prepared for this. <laughs> so we're going to go right here. And we're going to give it that. See? And we'll just go around. And after we give it a second or two, it will do that. There we go. So, um, this is the use that I thought of before. Um, let's swap inventories chests that I prepared. I am at least prepared for one thing, so I'm not doing horrible. So I'm going to go into game mode zero. So now this is essentially a type of mini game, almost, kind of, sort of, not really, but it can be used in types of puzzle maps. So I have 12 lapis blocks here, and I need to connect this lapis block to this lapis block without using any more than 12 blocks. So now what we can try to do is go over here. Maybe someone would think but we don't quite have enough to finish off the puzzle. But now what we actually can do is, after I finish breaking these lapis blocks, probably should give this one like efficiency 5. Yeah, efficiency 5 is nice. And obviously you would make so either all these blocks are not breakable. And then, but if we do something like maybe this way. Now this is a really easy puzzle, mind you, but I just wanted to make one quickly, but one much better could be made. And see, that's able to finish the puzzle. So now we can do stuff up there. This is a flash motion. So we'll track it through. And then it goes to that one. Then you would have some kind of test for for that block right there, saying that you know I have placed a glass block. Sorry, a um, gold block. So just just an idea. So how this works is over here. It's pretty simple, honestly, I'd say so. Um this is annoying, so I'm going to turn it off. It's very annoying. But um how this works is we have our first thing here. We have this clock that's going on, and the first command block is essentially a um, execute command from the silverfish that's being spawned, saying all entities with name equals seek is spawning with the name seek. And those coordinates, which is like, for example, if we would have some lapis blocks here, or I'll do less line blocks. So he's right here, right? This is where the silverfish is. And he's going to test for blocks here, 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 and here every single time. Now, it can't have any junctions really, but it would say, okay, there's no lap, there's no block here, there's no block here, there's no block here for this block over. But I can go to this one, so I'm gonna teleport myself over, convert this one to lime wool so I don't actually have to so I don't accidentally go back to it, and then I'm gonna repeat the entire process over again. And that's pretty much how this works. It will test for the block. If it's true, it will execute this command and then replace with wool. And all these other ones are just for slight variations. Now what happens at the end here is each time it's going off, it'll go through, and it'll activate this little, um, what should we call it, um, pulse extender. So if we extend that for a second, you'll see it'll take a few seconds, and then that'll turn off. And then that'll have it be turned off, but it'll turn back on. And then I'll execute from it to set the block to gold above it, and then it'll give it um, instant damage uh, for 250, so that essentially just instantaneously kills it. Now this first little circuit here is for spawning it, and that command is essentially removing anyone with the slowness effect. Obviously it can be activated any way you want it to. Let's just currently have I done done. This one will um, spawn a silver fish with the name Seek, and it'll get, say, custom name visible, or it'll execute it at your position. Um, custom name visible, yes. Active effects, 14, which is invisibility. Amplifier, 0 duration a long time, and ambient one, which makes the particles a little bit more difficult to see, and then this will give um, it the, the what, what, what does it give it, um, slowness. So that's pretty much how this works, so I can draw any shape I want, for example, this, 
I probably should have got a little bit more prepared for today. So I'll just draw maybe a little spiral. Spirals are fun, right? Let's do a spiral. Nope, not like that. Like this. And it's not activated. <laughs> you get you guys get the simple idea of this. It's um it's fun, it's interesting, and I think it can be used in a pretty cool way in maps. Um let me know what you guys think, and that's pretty much it for now. This is Joel Zepper, signing out. See you guys.